where do we stop? We computed. I think we did write down the formula for the F. 2K plus one. Oh, I think these were just notes about, yeah, these were just notes about how to deal with uh, if you just have odd terms. So one way to kind of shortcut eliminating all your even terms is to um, essentially force an odd index by using the 2K plus one or 2K minus one. So I was just showing you why that works out to give you the odd terms. To the left of the screen, you plug zero in for A. Yeah, so this was centered somewhere around here. So, uh, that was part of the problem. Can you go down to where you wrote, why doesn't that zero turn your f of x into, uh, why doesn't it cancel out the entire f of x? Or are you plugging so that's zero in for the x? <coughs> Yeah, so I did all that work up here. So I decided, wh what is f, pr you know, f of zero, f prime of zero, f double prime of zero, and then I used that uh, pattern right there: zero, one, zero, negative one, and that's how we built up our uh, step function right here. This is sort of our first iteration, and then I said, well, let's just ignore the even ones. How do we accomplish? Ignoring the even ones, we instead of using k, use 2k plus 1, so you just can't get even numbers out. And so there, there are no even numbers anymore. And then we just have to alternate signs the right way. Okay. And so, so I, I kind of re indexed our step function, and then I finally said, oh, we don't need a step function because it just goes 1, negative 1, 1, negative 1. And I know a function that has that property, and it's this one right here. So this was kind of turning a slightly weird pattern into one that's very easy to write down. Okay. So we are almost finished. We have our A, let's see, our AK formula. So we're going to use this last one right here. So the only difference is I'm going to drop in the, let's see, oops. So this is f 2k plus 1. So this means a 2k plus 1 is f 2k plus 1 at 0 divided by k fact, ooh, k 2k plus 1 factorial. Wherever I see k, I have to replace it with 2k plus 1. So a k is f k at 0 divided by k factorial, somewhere that's written down. I started writing it over here, except I messed up because this this should be a k. Ignore all this stuff right here. Let's ignore just this. So that's a k. We used a k two k plus one, which was f two k plus one of zero factorial, and now finally f 2k plus 1 of 0, I'm going to replace with negative 1 to the k. And that's our a 2k plus 1, and now last step, I'm going to uh, substitute out a 2k plus 1 with this expression right here. So I'm rewriting the summation above except replacing a2k plus 1 with negative 1 to the k. So if you're ever wondering, how in the world does your calculator know what sign of something weird like 1 is? Because in our trig class, we really had no way to figure out sign of 1. The way they do it is they have a, now obviously your calculator doesn't have an infinite amount of time, so it's not going to go to infinity, but it goes out 10 or 20 or 30 degrees in that polynomial and figures out that value. 
and that's good too. Uh, the further you go, the higher degree terms you have, the more accurate number you get out of this. So that's how your calculator gives you decimal approximations. It uses uh, polynomial uh, approximations. So that's for sine. So I want to find the series. Now, of course, I could look for convergence. If I asked you about when does this converge, what's a good test to use for convergence? What's the best test to use? Ratio test. So you can't go alternating series because depending on if x positive or negative, it's going to screw up the alternating part of this. Uh, you don't really want to go limit comparison because, or any comparison test because x can change. So you're going to compare it with another series that has an x in it that would completely change. So you really need to go uh, root or ratio and generally go ratio unless uh, if this right here was uh, maybe 5 to the 2k plus 1, I would go root. But because it's not raised to a k power, I would not use the uh, root test here. So ratio would be the best to check for convergence. So find series for cosine x. You could find the derivatives and then the pattern of the derivatives oh, at a equals 0. So you could find the derivatives, find the pattern. It's going to look pretty much like 0, 1, 0, negative 1, except it's shifted a little bit because it starts, I think it goes 1, 0, negative 1, 0. So it has a similar pattern. But there's another way. Instead of going and uh, redoing everything, this is a lot of work to do. How can I use the fact that sine is this series to figure out the series for cosine? How are cosine and sine related? They're related in a few ways, but what's the easiest calculus way they're related? So I, I can't just write equals, but what can I do to one of the two sides to make this equal? Derivatives on what side? So either the derivative of sine is cosine, or the antiderivative of cosine is sine. And I can go either way. Uh, I actually want to solve for cosine, so it's already solved for cosine. So we're ready to go. Now I'm going to make a substitution. I'm going to take out sine x, and I'm going to replace it by the summation right up here. So we're making a substitution. So I'm taking out sine and replacing it with this summation. This is a lot like what we did in the problems in the last section where we took one series we knew about and made a, uh, a new series from it. So the derivative distributes across the sum. So I can use that sum property here. So I really need to only take the derivative of the individual terms. What is the derivative of negative 1 to the k over 2k plus 1 factorial times x to the 2k plus 1? So this problem is way easier. than you're thinking. Remember, there is no try. There's only do. What is that term as far as the derivative is concerned? Just a number. That's a constant. There's no x's in there at all. It's an ugly number. It's got k's and whatnot and factorials, but don't be afraid. There's no x in there, so it's just a number. So I can push the derivative through. So we got negative 1 to the k, 2k plus 1. You can find this derivative. You better be able to find this derivative. It's one of the first things you learned in Calc 1 that you remembered. You forgot most things about limits, but 
You probably remember the power rule. So there's our derivative, 2k plus 1 times x to the 2k, not plus 1 anymore. So I just drop the power by 1. I also expanded my factorial in the bottom by one term. So 2k plus 1 factorial is the 2k factorial times the next higher uh, integer, which is the 2k plus 1. I did this because I get to cancel, cancel right here. So it doesn't completely cancel the factorial, it just cancels the biggest term in the factorial. So it drops your factorial down one. So there's the power series for cosine. You will get the same thing if you if you correctly apply the uh, Taylor method for taking derivatives, finding the pattern, plugging in A, putting it into the summation formula, you would get the same thing. Can we work backwards? Uh, what do you mean? Go from the summation to the actual function. Is it going from the function to the uh, Yes, but you need to know what a lot of the summations look like, and you have to be very good at algebra. Okay. So. For example, uh, <clears throat> let's write out the expansion for 2x squared minus 30 at x equals 0. So all we're going to do is replace x by 2x squared minus 3. And it's actually very straightforward. Literally putting 2x squared minus 3 in the box. That's it. And actually, let's not do the minus 3 part. That's going to mess up my algebra. Just do just uh, 2x squared. So this is the cos of 2x squared right here. Now, the, if you gave me this series and you didn't tell me it was you know, where it came from, I could probably tell you pretty quickly this is cosine 2x squared. Where you're going to run into problems is when you get a series in a slightly different form. So we got 2 to the 2k, x to the 4k. All I did was use a little bit of algebra and basically distribute that power right there. But now all of a sudden the form is somewhat different. And this 2 to the 2k might mess me up a bit. And I also see a 4k, which I could probably recover from the 4k, but that might be a little more tricky to see because you have to kind of factor out that 2k power, which may not be obvious how to do it. So the short answer is you can go from a series back to a function if you can kind of reverse the algebra to make it look like one of the popular ones you know about. So in, I think, page negative 5 in your textbook where I'm counting negatives from the back, so this is back in the appendix. There's, I think, about nine popular Taylor series written out there. So there's nine popular Taylor series in textbook. So I'm writing page minus five, which means this is the end of the book minus five. So just flip five. 
five pages back and you'll see all the Taylor series written right there. Do you see them in the back? Yeah, and it's, I think it says Taylor series at the top. Yep, so it should be pretty clear where they are. So that could help you out on your homework. Depending on how busy your cheat sheet is, you can write some of them on your cheat sheet. You don't necessarily need all of them. I won't write an exam that requires you to know them all. But I might write a problem that could be helped by having some of those on your sheet. But it definitely can help you with your homework, doing your homework faster. If you have to compute 15 of these by hand, you're going to spend a whole long time doing it. I recommend compute two or three so you know how to do it, you have some practice, but don't uh, compute every single one by hand. And there are some functions, if I asked you to find the Taylor for even something that looks innocent like tangent, well, the first thing you do is take a derivative. What's the derivative of tangent? Secant squared, which I'll write properly, secant squared. What's the second derivative? Well, you got to be careful. It's 2 secant times secant tangent. Which you could rewrite 2 sec squared. Now, the next derivative is going to be a bit uglier. And the next derivative is going to be more ugly. So tangent is a great candidate for not finding the Taylor series for. I don't want to find the Taylor series for tangent. Uh, if you have the Taylor series for sine or cosine, you can get the other one really quickly. So there's, uh, you don't need sine and cosine. You just need sine or cosine and then take the derivative to get the other one. Um, I'd probably write the one down for sine because the derivative of sine is positive cosine. So if you're going to pick one, I would write down, just like we did, write down the sine. You can get cosine in 30 seconds or so. So a lot of these you can derive yourself. E to the x is an, e is an easy one to memorize. If you look at the page, e to the x is the fastest one to compute. So e to the x, if you look at it, you can memorize it very easily. And you can also compute it in about a minute or so. Why is that? What's the derivative of e to the x? E to the x. There you go. So what's the pattern? E to the x. So the pattern is super easy. You're not going to spend much time figuring out that pattern. That's the easiest pattern out there. So f prime of, well, f k of 0 equals e to the 0, which is 1. And that's true for every single coefficient. So I can just write it out in about 20 seconds. So some of them are super easy. Some of them, like tangent, forget about it. It's going to take forever. So what in the world is a Taylor series? So we defined it, but what, what is it used for? So the short answer is approximation. So we just looked at a uh, sign. So let's look at the uh, sine x equals summation. And I'm not going to go to infinity. I'll just go to some n value. Just negative 1 to the k, x 2k plus 1 over. So sine is easy to graph. Etc. Etc. So that's basically the graph of sine keeps going. Let's say it only went up to uh, n equals two. That would be if you think about n equals two, that would give me a degree five polynomial right here. Actually, let's start even lower. Let's start at n, n equals zero. So here's the n equals zero case. You're going to have a line right there that has a slope, its slope is going to match the slope of the sine function. So an n equals 1, not 1, 0. It's kind of boring. Minus 1 to the 0, x to the first over 
one factorial. Wow, I just shortcutted some really bad notation. All right, I'm just not going to write out the whole expression right there. So this simplifies down to x. So y equals x, easy function to graph, graphs out something like that. So what happens if I go from 0 to 1 of these terms? What do I get? Well, 